Pricing pages might look simple, but when you try to model them in a CMS, things get messy fast. Grouped features, table versus card layout, and marketers wants to add new features or reorder things. In this video, I'll show you how I built a flexible pricing model in Prismic. One that separates plans, features, and groups into their own custom types, making it easy for marketing to edit and reorder. If you used Prismic before, you know this can be quite tricky. But thanks to a new feature in Slice Machine, it's now a lot simpler. No more complex graph queries or fetch links required. We will take a look at how you could set up the model for the types, as well as a slice with variations for both table and card layouts, walk through the code that brings it all together, and finally take a look at the editing experience. So let's take a look at the content models we need to set up to get to a state where we can do pricing cards and pricing table like this. If we take a look in Slice Machine, I just have one simple page type and that's just to be able to add my slice to somewhere. And then I, of course I have a pricing slice that brings all of this together. But first, uh, let us take a look at the custom type that makes all of this work. So we have three custom types. One is for each pricing plan. So each document will represent a plan. You see three plans here in each slice. One is for a pricing plan feature, which could be users, locales, or user roles, for example. And the third one is a pricing plan group, which basically takes features and groups them. So we can have groups within the table where we can organize our features. The simplest one is the pricing plan feature. It just has a title and description. And the title pretty much is the name of the feature, so locals in this case. And the description is used to be able to, where we want, show a tooltip like this, where we kind of describe the feature. Next up is the pricing plan group. And here it becomes a bit more exciting because we have a title, of course, for the group name, localization here. And then we need to link features to this pricing group to be able to show them in the group, right? So we have a repeatable group field, which is pretty new still in Prismic. But then the exciting part is our content relationship field. So before, when you added a content relationship to another type, a feature in this case, you just selected which content relationship you wanted to link to and that's it and then in the code you had to define what type of fields you needed uh, to fetch on that content relationship either via fetch links or graph query but that's no longer the case as of today we just launched so you pick what fields you need for this specific content relationship right inside the slice machine and the api will handle the rest so once you query a pricing plan group document you will also get all of its features with the fields you selected to include here. So that's it for the pricing plan group. And then we have the most advanced custom type, which is a pricing plan. So obviously we have a title for the plan. We have a monthly and yearly pricing. And then we link features to the plan. And as you can see, here we have uh, yet another repeatable group with a content relationship for each feature we want to link on the plan. And here it's a bit different because if you don't link a feature to a plan, you will get like the feature is not included, right? Uh, but if you link a feature, you will just get a check mark. But if you want something custom like custom or three or unlimited, we also have a description field for that within the pricing plan. So you can define how to do, describe that feature basically within the pricing plan document. Then we have a call to action and a highlighted, which basically the call to action is the link we put together with the pricing plan to take the user to the next step after the selected pricing and the highlighted just marks the card or the column in the table as highlighted. Other than these three custom types, as I said, we have a basic page and we have the slice. And the pricing slice consists of course of a table and a cards variation. And the cards variation, we have a heading, just as in the table, which is the title of the slice, basically. And then for both slices, we can select a content relationship for which plans we want to include in that specific slice. Because if we might want to show cards where we show only two pricing plans, even if we have more, for example. So you select which plans you want. And of course, when you select a plan inside of here, you want all the data within that plan as well, so we can use it. 
and hence I checked all fields in this selector. And then we have for the cards, we have the features that you want to link because you might want to just highlight a couple of features and not group them within the cards to not make them uh, so heavy. So here I just have a repeatable group with a link to the feature custom type where you can pick features. In the table, on the other hand, I have a group field where you can pick a pricing plan group instead. And here, of course, I want to include the data about that group's features as well. That's it for the content modeling. Next, let's take a look at how we put this together in the code. If you're into this type of practical modeling walkthroughs, make sure to subscribe. On this channel, we share more videos like this one, but also full-length tutorials on building with Next, Prismic and Modern Tooling. We also got interviews with some of the biggest minds in web development, like Guillermo from Vercel and Rich Harris, the creator of Svelte. All right, let's look at how we could actually code the slices we just modeled. Now let's take a look at how this slice could be coded. So as you can see here, we have just a single slice in our slice library called pricing. And we have a couple of components. So we have the entry point, of course. We have a plan header and a slice header, which are components that I reuse across both uh, the table and the card slice. So let's take a look at them first. So the slice header is basically just a prismic rich text style of it. And that's just to render, obviously, this header, which we use in every slice. So nothing fancy there. And then we have the plan header, which takes a bit more props. So we take a title, pricing monthly and pricing yearly, if we are on yearly pricing and the call to action. And this component is also pretty self-explanatory. It's used as this header here, which are the same in both the table and the cards. And where you can see the switching works the same. So with those simple components out of the way, let's close the sidebar and take a look at the index file. So what we do in here is we, of course, import the variation components, the table and the cards, and we start by initializing a Prism client. Then from the content relationship field where we can pick which plans we include in the slice, we get the IDs of those plans. And then we use the Prismic client to fetch the plan documents. And this is the place where you before would have, if, if you would have wanted to get the features or the feature group of that plans, you would have to add an object here with some fetch links like this, where you define all the fields and stuff, but not needed anymore since we got that new feature within Slice Machine. What we do next after getting the plans is we set up some empty variables for groups and features because groups, as you remember, will be used in the tables and features will be used in the cards. So if we are on the table slice variation, we collect the group IDs from the content relationship field with groups, check if they are filled, of course, and create an array of IDs that we can use with the Prismic client to query all the groups we need for the table slice. And for the cards, we do the exact same thing, but for feature IDs instead, based on that content relationship field. And then we use the Prismic client to get all the features. And then we just render everything out with a conditional checking. If we're on the table variation, use the table component, pass the groups. If we're on the cards variation, use the cards component and pass the features instead. That's the index file, the entry point. If we check out how the cards are modeled instead, so as you see, we take the props that we talked about before and we import some UI components, which are basically just bare bones, shad Z and UI components, which we will need for the slice. We set up some React state for handling the switch, switch, switching between monthly and yearly pricing to keep track of that. Of course, this is a client component because we use hooks here. And then we use the simple slice header component to render the heading. We use the switch from Shad CN to take care of switching the yearly pricing. And then we map over our pricing plans. And for each plan, we create a card, which are those cards you see here. And if the plan is highlighted, we change the styling a bit to make the card more visible. And then in the card header, we put the plan header where we pass all of the, like the name of the plan, 
monthly and yearly pricing, the state of what pricing we want to show, and the call to action button. And we already saw that component. And now for how we loop over these features. And here it's pretty simple, right? Because in the cards, we just want to show features, the ones we selected in the slides, of course, or in the pricing plan, of course. So the thing we do here is we find if this feature exists in the current plan by matching UIDs. If it's found, plan feature will contain the feature data for this plan. If not found, plan feature will be undefined. And then we render an LI for each feature and we um, print the feature title, right? Which is the title you see here. And then we use this plan feature that we created up here. If it's undefined, we just render the dash like here, because in the starter plan, we only included one feature. And if it's not undefined, we write the plan feature description, which would be 10 or unlimited or custom. And if we have no description, instead it will become just a check mark, like feature is included. And that's basically it for the pricing cards. Looking at the table, on the other hand, it's a bit, tiny bit more advanced. Still looking the same here. We have the state, it's a client component. We render the slice header and the switch again. And then we use the shed CN table component. And the first thing we do here is we create a table header with a row, and then we create an empty cell, the first cell here, which is this one, where we just set some background here. And then for each plan, we create a new cell. If the plan is highlighted, we change the background to have it like this. And in this cell, we just use the plan header again, the same component you have here as here. And after the table header is done, we open the body and we map over our groups. So this would be the groups, localization and users and user roles. And for each group, we create a new table row, of course. We create the first table cell, which has the group title, this one. And then we map over our plans. But this is just an empty cell. The only thing we do is change the background if the plan is highlighted. So we get a highlighted cell like this, otherwise just an empty cell. And then we start to go over the group features, right? Because we want to create new rows for each feature. And we also check so that the feature is filled. And here is a place where it's also nice with this new, uh, where you define the content relationship fetching of fields within Slice Machine, because now this gets typed. So we don't need to, for this one, usually you would have to kind of do some typecasting and change the type since uh, the Prismic API had no idea that we fetched those links within the call. But now that's not needed anymore. So we create a table row uh, for each feature within the group. We put the feature title. If the feature description is filled, we render a tooltip component, which is this one where you can check a bit more about the feature. And then we loop over the plans within here again. And here we do the same matching of UIDs as we did in the pricing card slice. And we render a cell for each plan that has Again, if the feature is not defined, just a dash, otherwise the description, otherwise a check. And that's pretty much it. They work kind of similar, just that here we need to loop over groups instead, but it's a lot simpler now that we don't need to do typecasting and do the fetch links ourselves. So now that we know how we can create our slices within the code, let's take a look at the editing experience within Prismic. So once all of the models I showed you earlier are pushed to Prismic, you can see here in Prismic that I am utilizing one of our other new feature called Spaces. So I have my main space, which will be created for every new repository you make. But then I created a separate space for pricing. And this is to group the pricing plan group, the pricing plans and the pricing plan features in one place to not clutter the rest of the editing experience. And as you can see from the example I showed you before, this is the content of that. So we have two pricing plan groups, three pricing, pricing plans and four features, right? And looking at them would be 
no surprises at all. We have groups where we have linked some features and we can, of course, reorder the features if we want within those groups. And for the pricing plans, growth, for example, you can see here that we have filled all of the data and same here, we can reorder the features within growth, which will reflect in the pricing cards. But let's take a look at how the slices look and how, what we can do to edit them. So here we have the exact same page that we see here. We have the cards slides first and we have all of the plans linked. But of course, I could remove a plan from here and it will be removed from the slides as well. Obviously, we might want to center these or something in the design. And for the features, we just highlighted a couple of features we want to show. So three features in this example, I can easily remove one and it will be removed from here as well. And taking a look at the table, kind of same thing there. Of course, we can reorder plans if we want. So let's move the group plan and it jumps to the front. And then we have the groups, which we also can reorder to move the groups around here and to reorder features within a group, obviously we would need to go in here and go to that specific group and start to reorder features in here instead. So very simple editing experience. For the sake of it, let's create a new pricing plan group, which we can call test. And we have no features yet, so let's save that. We create a new feature for it as well. Create a new pricing plan feature that we call test feature. And then we add tool tip here and save that. And then we publish this new feature and let's head back again to the group. This is our, let's call it test group. Let's add this new test feature to it and save and publish this one. So now for example, this feature is obviously not added to any plan yet, so we won't see anything here, right? But if we go into, for example, this is a feature that we will only have in the enterprise plan. Then we go into enterprise. In the feature section of enterprise, we add this feature called test feature. And we say that in enterprise, we have 10 of this feature. And then we publish this. And then we need to go back to the slice. So if we want to add that feature, to the pricing cards, we need to add it here, right? So we add the test feature, save and publish. And we should see that test feature updating the card. So we have test feature, nope, nope, but here we have 10, right? And if we want to add it to the table instead, we of course need to add the group here. So we created the test group and let's publish that. We can already see that it updated here. And now we have the test group with the test feature, which is not in the starter, not in the growth, but 10 in the enterprise plan. And of course, we could move that feature on top if it's an important, or that group on top if it's an important one. Publish. And then once this feature might get added to the growth plan, we can add it here as well. So we add the test feature, but in this case, we didn't fill anything in the description because we just want a check mark that it's included and don't want to specify anything. We go here again. We can now see that we have it on top, not included in starter, checking growth and 10 in enterprise. And there you have it. With this approach, pricing goes from a hard-coded nightmare to a flexible, marketing-friendly model. You solve the rendering piece once, and then your team can add new features, reorder section, or launch new pricing tiers, all from within Prismic. If you'd like to see more advanced modeling walkthroughs like this one, let me know in the comments, especially if there is a specific case where you're struggling to build things in a way that feels intuitive for your marketing team. I'd love to cover more examples like that. And if you found this helpful, hit like and subscribe for more tips and deep dives. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.